and uh, I should have probably recorded that little ditty there. Okay, so I am recording now. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys. Like I said, if you have any questions as we're going, um, we, uh, you know, just blurt it out and we will take care of you. Okay. All right, you guys should be seeing my screen now. Uh, so this is be lesson two. It's due next Tuesday at midnight. And you can see we're going to read chapter two. We got three programs here. We're going to do one of them tonight. I think we're going to do this uh, number two. And then I put in a little bit about um, kind of the ethics of programming. You know, uh, yeah, it's a cutthroat business and stuff, but there's still some sort of rules that people live by. So just read over them. It's nothing you're going to be tested on, but, you know, basically it's don't be a jerk, <laughs> I think, uh, that kind of thing. I don't have anything okay. under, huh? under, I don't have anything listed under lesson two yet. Yeah. Is it just not until after class that it shows up? No, it should be there. Yeah, I'm not seeing it either. What is going on there? Hang on. That's weird. When you click on, oh, there you go. Sorry. Usually I only have one thing to click. Refresh now, you should see it now. It's there now, yeah. I'm sorry. Yep, yeah, you guys, if you guys don't see your lessons pop up like the day before, you guys should let me know. Sorry about that. Okay. So anyway, we're going to, uh, if you go in there now, it should say read chapter two. And then, like I said, down here is some type of, you know, be honest and trustworthy, that kind of avoid harm to others. The... Um, I need to put my headset on so the video for or the sound. Hang on one second. That's the crazy thing about having an office hour before the class because I hate to sit with this thing on my head for like three hours. So I don't put it on usually until class starts. Let's see, plug it in. And the All right, can you guys hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep, yep, I can hear you. Yep. Is, is that better? Yep. Not really. I didn't used to use a headset, but then the recording, um, the video um, voice or sound in some is good. So, the first one here, here's, here's the trick on the first one, okay? There is a little, not a trick, but it's how Java works. This in here, okay, is this. To calculate from Celsius to Fahrenheit or back, you have to use a fraction, okay? So Java differentiates between integer division and regular division by the numbers that you're dividing. So if I try and divide nine by five, okay, the answer that Java is gonna give me is one, which when I multiply that times, um, it's like, let's just say I got nine divided by one times a hundred. Okay, is going to give me 100 because it thinks that nine divided by five, I'm sorry, nine divided by five would be one and it just cuts off any fraction because it's integer division. If I put in 9.0, oh, 
divided by 5.0, it's going to give me 1.8. So if I was to multiply that by 100, I get 180, which is a really big difference to my answer, right? And it will change the temperature in your uh, program by a lot. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter if at least one of the numbers has to be a floating point number. So if you take nine divided by 5.0, you'll get the right answer. If you take, uh, nine, what did I say? Nine, if I do nine divided by 5.0, or if I do 9.0 divided by five, I'll get the right answer, okay? Uh, just be careful with that. In other words, and I'll tell you what you should get. When I test that program, I usually type in a negative 40 is one of the numbers I type in because that negative 40 Fahrenheit and Celsius will come out the same. They're both a negative 40 at a negative 40. Or you can type in, if you type in zero for Celsius, you should get 32 for uh, Fahrenheit. If you type in 100 for Celsius, you should get 212 for the Fahrenheit. So that's some ways you can uh, do that. The other way to do it, of course, would be to go over to your um, oops, go over to Google and just type in Celsius to Fahrenheit and it brings this up. So you can type in any number you want and it'll give you the right answer. Believe me, if it doesn't, I mean, if yours doesn't give you this, the chances are that you're wrong, not uh, Google or whatever it is. Doug, can you explain why the denominator has the point, the um, decimal, like it's 5.0 opposed to um, the top number? I it don't matter which one. Oh, just one of them has to have. A one of them has to have a floating point, yes. Floating. Or both of them, it doesn't matter. But as long as one of them has a floating point, your answer will be, come out as a floating point. And it'll do regular division. Does that answer you? Yes, thank you. All right. uh, the bottom one's pretty cut and dry. It's just, uh, you know, you're going to put in how many miles you went, say you put went to, say you went 200 miles, your car gets 20 miles to the gallon, the gallon of gas costs you two bucks a gallon. Yeah, I wish. So, so if you went uh, 20 mile, 200 miles at 20 miles a gallon, that leaves you 10, 10 gallons of gas times $2 a gallon, your answer should be uh, 20 bucks, right? Something like that. So they're pretty cut and dry, but the best thing about them is now they're going to work better. They're useful uh, in that the user is going to put in um, the variables or put in the amounts, unlike the first lesson where we had literals. We had, we used uh, numeric literals, uh, which are just, uh, numbers that don't change. So, you know, unless I forget what it was like four point, a room or a rectangle was 4.9 times something. Well, unless we had a room that size or an area that size, the thing is useless. Okay. So this will make us a little more programmer friendly. I'm sorry, geez, user friendly. And we're going to work on the programmer friendly part. Okay. So we have to figure out how to uh, get input from the users. One of the big things we have to do tonight. So there's a lot of important. So I'm going to open up NetBeans. And I'm going to get rid of my one I've already done here. Do, do. 
there we go. So I have a new NetBeans uh, app up and I'm gonna go over and file, create a new project. Make sure you're in Java Ant. And then come over here and I think we'll just make it our uh, cylinder. Make sure you spell cylinder right. Cylinder uh, volume, we'll call it. And it should pop up. You guys should be seeing that right now. Again, if you get in here and you can't see it, uh, a lot of times you just expand these out and then just double click your, the name of your program down here and then it'll fill in your screen. You'll see it, the template there. So we're gonna get rid of this stuff and put in. And again, program, I usually type project and this will be my Acme cylinder mm, calculator. And this will be whatever you named it. Java at the end for my extension. Today's date, and again, I don't care how you do it. Today I'll go to fits, uh, Jan 2021, author is yourself. and some type of purpose. Radius and height by a user. Notice again, uh, we're trying to uh, tell what the purpose is of the program, not what your purpose is for writing the program. And then we're gonna clean this up down here. Again, I'm not using Java docs at this time, so I can get rid of that. And this comment here, we know that's where our code's gonna go. And then of course, I like to indent Pretty much here. I like my braces over one another with nothing in between them. So I'm gonna go ahead here and just indent this a little more for now. Clean that up and then maybe put a little divider here. Break that up. And again, the only reason I do that is to get you used to it. Once we start writing our own procedures and everything, we'll break the program up into those procedures and we'll start pulling stuff out of our main and into those procedures and methods so that our code isn't all crowded in here. Um, Everybody with me? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you know, right now, even, you know, your program, as soon as you open this thing, you can run it and it should always run. See that? You get this build successful down here. That means it ran. If you get something here, I'll make it crash here. Let's see. I'll do something stupid. No, it won't let me. Think. Uh, sir, I'm having some difficulty opening the actual program. Okay. Hang on. I'm messing mine all up now. Okay, what's happening? Whenever I hit new project, you go to Java Ant, right? Yep. Hit next, and it's just staying there. It's finding feature and nothing showing up. Hmm. 
I don't know. Let's, uh, I don't know that I can fix that over the, hang on one second here. Oops. Okay, you should be able to share your screen with us right now. You see All where right. you, so go ahead and do it. And let's see, I don't know that I can fix that. It might be a, more of a problem than, but we'll take a look at it. You know how to, there should be a, a green button that you can click that shares your screen. There you go. All right, let's, let's just start at the beginning. Close that. All right, now go to, let's try and open it again. Let's see what you got. A new project. All right, and, and then just click on Java application for me on the right side. Just click on it, that's fine, next. I think he needs JDK installed. Or... Oh, geez. Okay, go ahead and cancel that. So you can check if you have JDK in your uh, file directory. Uh, yeah. It's program. Yeah. He's got Java there. Yeah, you don't have it. I don't think. Okay, let's do this real quick. Close that. Close your browser there or your explore. Go to uh, go to that link I gave you for to get. Uh, yeah, go over to software and down, 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 text and software. Click on text and software. Up oh, there you go. Go down, uh, yeah, do wait. Yep, do that one first. Go down, keep going. What kind of machine you got? Uh, Windows 10. Okay, so click the second to the bottom. Yep, do that one. And say, I, yeah, yeah, download it. And we'll wait here for a second. And again, you know, this is, I know some of you, you know, oh God, you know, but uh, we've got plenty of time tonight, so just hang in there and we'll try and help our fellow student out here. Already installed on your computer. Would you like to hit yes? And I'm going to close the app. Sure. Okay, uh, da, da, that's good. So now I don't know if it'll find, cannot locate Java installation. Okay, do you want to try and use the default version? Uh, oh, I have NetBeans on the wrong drive. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now go back to where we were before and install NetBeans on where you need to install it. Um, I don't know if it'll let you do it from right there or not. Yeah, you can't just move the file, you gotta reinstall yeah, it. Just go back to the your Blackboard and just Hold reinstall on. it. So get on to the second one down. Whoop. He lost us. But... I'm right back. Ah. Uh, I'm right back. Did he say he'd be right back? Oh, there. All right. And then should be the top one, I think, there. DXE at the top. Yep. Got it running. 
Okay, there you go. And there we go. And try and put it in the right place this time. Sure, why not? This might oh, pretty fast. I did the last program on my sister's computer, which was uh, very slow at the time. So I just had to re-download okay. everything over here. I think I'm all right. Up. Well, we're going to make this video anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and start and you'll be able to catch up. OK. All righty. How's that sound? Sounds OK, so you can stop share. Oh, completed. Da -da. So try it now. Try running it. No, you do a new project. Oh, you do. Come on. There you go. Did you click next? I don't know. I'll try to figure this out and I'll just uh, watch whatever part of the yeah, video just I can catch later. Well, you can watch it now, you know, as we do it, and then you can watch the video when you redo yours or whatever. Don't matter. All right. So we're going to go, I'm going to go back here. I can get there. All right. So here we are. We got everything laid out, it's real clean. Got our indentations. Remember, if something's inside something else, usually I like to indent it. That's a little much. Uh, that way I can look from here to here and see that I have the matching brace in each case because we're going to have more and more of those braces as our programs become more complicated. Um, so one thing we wanted, one of the things we needed to do tonight is learn how to get stuff from the keyboard. And in Java, we do that with a scanner, okay? So to get a scanner, I need to import that. And it's out of a Java library called Utilities, but we, we just make it util like that. And all this stuff here is in that Java library. The one we want is scanner, okay? But, and, You'll see some guys will do this. They'll just put a splat here. And that means I can use anything out of this library uh, when I do that, okay? I'm not gonna let you do that in this class because I want you to know what's in there individually. Uh, it really doesn't use, you think, well, if you put everything in there, it's gonna use up a lot of memory. Well, not really because you haven't instantiated it yet. And by that, I'll explain that in a minute. So if we do that, and then we're gonna just start typing scanner and do that. And remember, this has to be underneath, okay? Okay, so this is like a blueprint. We're going to get a blueprint. We haven't built anything yet, okay? So down in here now that we have that, so this is like, yeah, like you were gonna build a house. And this is kind of like the object-oriented programming. 
we're going to go get this thing, but before we can use it, we have to build it. So we're going to build an object of the type scanner and we'll give it some name. Uh, oh, I'm going to call it uh, user in. That's a capital I there, by the way. And that's what its name's going to be. And I need to make it a new scanner. And I want to get the, the information for the scanner from the system in. Now, the, the fault for the system in is your keyboard. OK? So whatever we type on the keyboard is going to go uh, be called user in. It's going to be done by this user in object. And this object has a bunch of stuff it can do. OK, and you'll see that in a minute. So now this is instantiating, creating an instance of instantiate a scanner object called user in. OK? Um, my import, um, import Java isn't working. It's asking me to, it says it's unused import. Where, right here? It has a line underneath it? Back up. I was trying to like rework it, but it's not working at all. Well, because it, just because it says it hasn't been used, that's fine until you type this line down here. Okay, yeah, it has that like, yellow squiggly line under there? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Once you type this line, the yellow squiggly will go from there, and then now it'll be underneath this one. The only ones you want to really worry about is if it's red. Yellow is just a warning. OK, yellow is just a warning. OK, and above this here, I think I'm going to type. This is going to be my input area. Oops, let me get out of there. Hear my dog drinking water. That's not me. Okay. Three things basically we're going to do in this program is we're going to get inputs from the user. We're going to process those inputs. And then we're going to output them in some way. Okay. Or IPO is what we call it. Sometimes in computer program or in computers. We have IPOS, and the S at the end just means to uh, save it or store it or whatever. So we have input, process, output. And a lot of times, they don't necessarily, we don't know them in the right order. Sometimes we know what we want at the end prior to knowing uh, how we're going to get it or how we're going to process it. In other words, I might know that I need to uh, find the cubic area of the cylinder. Okay, that's my final, what my final output's gonna be, but then I gotta go figure out how am I gonna get that? What inputs do I need? What processing do I need, okay? But it's usually an IPO like that. And we want this to look nice and pretty. And I hate when I start a program uh, of somebody's and I uh, run it and all it says is like enter your name well why would I want to enter my name what's going to happen or enter your age I no, I'm not going to do that I'm not going to enter my social security number until you tell me what you're going to do with it or why I have to enter it so let's go ahead here and put system out print line and this is again the acme cylinder calculator. Something like that. Okay. And once again, that'll run fine or it should. Here it is. And we need some user friendly prompts. Okay. 
And so we're going to type in system.out.println or print, just print. And uh, I'll show you the difference between that and print line here in a minute. And we're going to say, what is the radius of the cylinder? Notice I got a little space there. Uh, so the number isn't going to be right up against it. Okay. Everything's spelled correctly. And now I need to get that and store it. Okay. So I can put in what kind of uh, variable do I want? What is the data type of the variable I want? Somebody. Is it an integer? Okay, it could be, but what if my radius is 10.2 feet? It's float. It is a float, but we can go, I'll allow you to do float, but I'm gonna use, because I told you guys you could use just integer and double. Oh. Yeah, because I want to be able to have decimal feet, right? Because I, I'd be way off if, if the thing was supposed to be 10, 10 foot, six inches or something. I am only putting in integers. So that's a choice you have to make depending on what you're doing. Okay, and then I'm going to say assign to that whatever they type on the computer. Okay, so this is going to say user in. And then look at all this stuff I can do with my user in. These are all the methods that I can use. Well, what I want is next double. And it looks just like that. And then to see if it works, I'm going to go ahead and just print that out. So you should have something like that. Then when you run it, comes up like that and you say, what is the radius? And if I put 10, it prints out 10. If I run it again and type 10.2, it still works. If however, I come in here and type Doug, it crashes. This is an exception. This is what happens when it doesn't go the way it's supposed to go. Okay. And that's not good. But for right now, you're not going to worry about it. And we're going to later on in a couple of weeks, I'm going to show you how to make this so user friendly that the user cannot uh, go anywhere until they actually type in a number. They type in anything else but a number. Let's say they type in uh, an exclamation point and hit enter. It, it's going to come back and just say, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that until they do it correctly. Okay. But for right now, we don't care that if, and again, I call it, and this is not a politically correct term, but I call it, we're gonna make it idiot proof later on. But for right now, if somebody mistypes, uh, that's fine, okay? Uh, so check yours, you should run to this point. Once I get here, I'm just gonna go ahead and I know it works up to that point. So I'm just gonna rem that out. By rem, I mean, I'm gonna remark it out or comment it out. I don't need this anymore. I could actually get rid of it if I want to, okay? Any questions? Nope. All right, since we have that, let's do it again. And I'll show you, well. Put 
that there. Then we'll come down here and this will also be a double. Notice my variable names are meaningful. All right, and then we'll go ahead and try check that. Again, I check all the time because I'd rather fix it now than have to go over and fix it later. So if I know it's running to a certain point, um, I know it has to be right there. If I try and type in a bunch of code and then, uh, you know, I'm typing, 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 and then try and run it. And I've been working on it for an hour and haven't checked anything. It's a lot harder to find my errors. Okay. So I'll run it again. This time the top one isn't going to print out. So I'll just type 10 in there and 10.2 here. And it prints 10.2. Notice here that um, I didn't get a line feed there. This should have been print line. So that's the difference. Okay. So now you make a decision. And in my, I like when I run mine, I'll, I'll make these two different here so you can see the difference. So on the first one here, notice where my cursor ends up at the end of the line. So I like that. I, I, that's what I normally do, okay? I like when the user comes right along there and they type in at the end. And then I hit this one and look where my cursor is now. It's underneath. Okay? So if you like your cursor under there, then you make this line a print line. If you like your cursor out here, then you just make it a print, okay? okay. So depending on which one you like. Hey, Doug, I have a question for you real yeah. quick. So um, when I try to run my program, it lets me do the shift F6 thing, but the little play button at the top of the screen is uh, grayed out. Yeah, mine too. Uh, I guess I don't know. So this isn't coming up? Yeah. Yeah, I just had that not. issue. All you do is you close the tabs out right next to your uh, .java folder. Uh, like you see where it says uh, cylinder volume .java and then start page. You click those out and it should work. Oh, these right here? Yeah, on those sides, they probably have tabs up. Hmm. That's that's what it did for me. Oh, you might have other another. Do you have another program over here? Uh, I do. I have one. Yeah. That's because so it doesn't know which one to run. I think if you go in and close the other one, or if you click on, let's say you got one above this one, and you come down and click on this, I think the green light will go on. Yep, it's working now. All right. Thank you. Yeah, if you load this thing up over here, it doesn't know which program you want to run. So you're going to have to uh, do whatever. Um, also, I still have just what is the radius of the cylinder. I didn't, mine didn't run um, height. Oh, because you didn't put this line in. I have it in there. It's not running. Okay, well, look. Go ahead and share your screen. Let me get out of mine. Share your screen with me or us, and we'll I'll let these guys dissect what you did. All right. So, sorry, I was muted. That's all right. So, run your program. Sorry, the little thing is blocking. Okay, so now go to the end of the cylinder there. Type something in. 10.2. Oh, 10.2. Now hit right. enter. Oh, sorry. What do you mean? Looks like it's working fine. 
Hit 10 now. Hit 10? Yeah, type 10. There you go. Okay, a couple things though, right? So it looks nice, okay? First of all, where do you want to enter? Do you want to enter underneath or next to? Um, probably next to. Okay, so let's go up to next to where you have, what is the radius of the cylinder? Up above, up above in your program. Click on your program up above and get rid of the output down below for now. All right, so over on the left over here, go left from where you're at. Yep, right after the print, take away the LN. Is that the power of LN is just shifting, like tabbing it over? No, that moves it down. Oh, okay. Okay, so then go down to your other one. And then at the end of that, I want where it says cylinder. Okay, now put a colon and a space. There you go. And now it looks real nice and you're where I'm at. And Thank then you, you can go ahead and rem out the system out print height because we don't need that anymore. And then you can stop sharing so I can come back. All right, so we're there, all right? Now, I wanna tell you something that sometimes people, uh, some programmers declare their variables up here at the beginning. And so you might see something like this, don't do this, I'm just gonna show it to you. So you do double radius up here, and then you do double height up here. Those are declared and then you can come down and then what they'll do is those are, so you can find them right away and you can get rid of those there. And that's, this would work exactly the same way. This does nothing different uh, than um, what we had before. You declare them here, you don't put values in them till down here. Uh, for right now, I would just stick with uh, what we had. So it looks like this. Now, we do need something else. We can't calculate this without pi. Okay. So right here, though, I'm going to put a couple lines in there. And um, I'm going to... Hello? I have a question. Yeah, Hi. go ahead. Um, my program isn't running. And it says there's a problem with the uh, part where I have the scanner user line. Okay, share your screen or here, let me stop. Let's see what you got. So this is what I have. Yeah, you got to share your screen so we can see it. Oh, no, they're not sharing it. Okay. Nope. Sorry. Basic. You're not seeing it. Um, sorry. It's struggling with this. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Um. Okay. You guys can all see that? Now we can see it. All right. Hang on. Okay. Oh, you're missing a space. Typo. Uh, 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 uh. Whoops. Right after new. See the big uh, red line? New. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got the it. other thing is user in, that's, you got user LN. It should be user capital I N. With that? Okay. Yep. And then go fix your other two. Okay. And just a word of 
See how you have public class cylinder volume with volume having a small V? Yes. Should be a capital V. Don't worry about that. Do not change it right now. Okay. All right. But in your next program, all words, like if you're typing in a name like that, every time yeah. you come to a new word, capital. So it's easy to read without spaces. Don't put spaces in. Right. But capitalize the first letter of every word. Okay, you can stop sharing now. Anybody else before we go on? You guys are seeing me now, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's go ahead here and create a constant. And I'm going to type, oops, that ain't going to work. Final, double, pi in uppercase is equal to 3.14159 is good. Now, Okay, so the uppercase, I mean, I could make any of my variables uppercase. Uh, it doesn't do anything, okay? I mean, it differentiates, but uh, the only reason this is a, a, a constant now is because of the word final right here. So that means this is a constant. It's a name, place, and memory that cannot change during program execution, okay? Now, um, Java has a math library that's built in and runs. I don't even have to import it, even though I could. But I could type this, too. If I didn't want to specify myself, I can type in math dot pi. And I would get the same thing. OK? Uh, I'm not going to do that on this one. I'm going to actually give it a literal. Okay, this is a numeric literal, right? So this number right here is a numeric literal being assigned to the constant named pi, which is a double, and it's final. Okay. So now I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to type in process, processes, process, process. And I'll just make a process right now. So now we need to do something. We need to calculate some stuff out. The first thing I'm going to ca uh, calculate out is the area of my cylinder the circular part, right? And that is equal to pi times the radius squared. Now in Java, we do not have, like in some languages, like let's say, uh, oh, Python, I would just do dot uh, splat splat two means raise it to the second power. In Visual Basic, we do something like raise it to the second power. Java does not have that. So you have to do radius times radius. Okay. And uh, again, uh, as far as doesn't matter what order they're done in. Okay, as far as precedence goes on this one. Okay. However, math comes in again. So if let's say that I wanted to multiply it by uh, radius to the fourth power, I would have to do 
radius times radius times radius. And that gets to look a little hokey, right? So what I can do is this, I can do math dot POW for power. And then I put in here, uh, radius. And then this becomes a two. And that would be uh, the radius to the second power using the math library method. So this is the, the math object. And this is one of its methods called power. And this is what I have to put in to get it to work, the arguments, okay? So that would work the same as what I had before. But for right now, I'm gonna leave mine. And my rule usually is if it's only two, I usually do this. If it's any more than two, I use the math raised to the power. So I'm gonna write that over here as same as I times math dot POW, and that would be radius to the second. Okay? So just know that you can use that. In other words, right now, if you wanna use this instead of radius times radius, you're, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, once I have the area, I can get the volume. So it's no more than area times volume. Whoops, I'm sorry, times height. Okay, and that'll give me my volume. And I want to test those, so I'm going to do this. I can do oops. something like that for testing. And I'm gonna run it. And I'm gonna start out by using 10 and 10 because I know that answer in my head already. Because 10 times, so um, the area is gonna be, the formula again was what? I, which is 3.14159 times 10 times 10 is 100. So all I need to do is move the decimal places over two. So the answer should be 314. And that's what I get down here. So I know that's right. And then if I multiply that again by 10, it should be 3,141, which it is. And so I think it's correct. Okay. Again, the other thing I could do is come over here and type in uh, volume of cylinder and it pops that up and I enter the radius as uh, let's do 10.5 and then come down here and maybe have a height of 20. And I see it's 69.27. I go back to my program and I run it. And I said the radius is 10.5 with the height at 20. And you can see here I get 69.26. And if I go back here, I get 69.27. Uh, it's probably because their pi that they're using isn't as precise as our pi that we're using, but it's close enough and I'm happy with it. I think the pi in your program, the second four should be a five. 
3.14159. You're right. Thank you. So now you let's see if we run it again if I'm even closer yet. 10.5 and 20. Now I get 62.97 and I think that's what they had, right? Yep. Thank you for that catch. Okay. So so that's great, but I it doesn't look pretty. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of that. And below that, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to type output. And I'm going to type, uh, oh, let's do system.out.print line. And I think I'll just put a blank line in. And then I'll put system.out.print line. type a cylinder with a radius of, and then a plus sign, and then radius, and, oops, I need a space, and a height of, Again, the spacing here becomes, because we want it to look nice, so. H-I-A-D-H-T, nice, and then always after you put the number in, we put a space, like if you're gonna concatenate. Concatenation is just uh, putting like a sentence together. Data, uh, let's see. The cylinder with a radius of this and a height of this has a, and then we're just going to do that. And then system dot out dot print line area. And this uh, area. So again, also, if you haven't noticed, every time you run your program, it automatically saves. You can save before it by clicking that, but once you hit the, the uh, run button, it goes ahead and saves anyway. So if I do uh, 10 here again, and here again, it says a cylinder with a radius of 10 and a height of 10 has a area of 314, 159 square units, and a volume of 314159 cubic units. So it looks pretty good, I think.
So it looks good, it's user friendly. I'm gonna add one thing down here. Again, watch this, I can do this. Um, oh, should I show you this? I can put in an extra line like this. If I want a blank line in front of my stuff or I can just do that for now. System dot out dot line. Do that. And then come down here. And that's it. That's pretty much what I would turn in. Run it, looks real nice. Type in 10.5 here, type in 20 here, and I get that. So does the no code follows? Is that like um it's just for the other pro again, if this program was real long, it doesn't do anything, right? It's just a remark. Okay, like if we we're going back to edit or something. Yeah, if somebody's scrolling down and thinking, you know, is there any code down below here anywhere? They know there isn't because there's a line there that said there isn't. Again, these are real small programs. If you had 10,000 lines of code here, you know, and you're scrolling and, okay, when's this thing gonna end? You could just, you don't need that. I mean, I'm just messing with you. Just something you can put in if you want. It's like all this other stuff. All this stuff is just for you in this class. Most people that would be programming wouldn't put this in because it's just standard math stuff in that, right? but I'm putting it in for a learning experience just to explain to you um, some of the stuff. What are we doing? Why are we doing this? Okay. Again, the only time I would put in comments like this is when they're warranted. If I'm doing something that somebody that's looking at my program might not understand I'll put a comment in, okay? Uh, some people uh, just say, when they declare a variable, they'll put a thing out to the side that says, you know, this is why I'm using this, okay? Or what does this variable represent? All this stuff up here is just to make it uh, programmer friendly because nobody's gonna see, the user's not gonna see this. Another thing that's hard to uh, understand in this class is that many times the people responsible for this program would be like four people, not just you. It'd be similar to, let's say you were gonna build a house or something. So you go to, you just don't go out and start pounding wood together. A lot of people would go and they would find an architect, okay? And the architect would draw the, what is this house gonna look like? What are we trying to build, okay? And that we have those people in computers, okay? Then the architect gives that, um, after some consultation with the person they're building for, would give that to the builder. And then the builder looking at the instruction, he'd be the guy that would put together the parts to build the house. And then finally, 
you, the person that ordered it, would be the user that uses it. And as we go along, that's going to get more complicated for us uh, because you have to keep in mind that once we start doing object oriented program, we as the final programmer might not be the person that created the object. Like right here, the scanner. Okay. We have no idea how that works. We didn't write any of the code. All we know is that if I come down here and I create one from the blueprint up here, it works. Okay. So it's what we call encapsulated. It's like um, when you drive your car, I'm, I'm guessing most of you drive a car, okay? How many of you know the size of the pistons in your car? I'm not hearing all, I'm hearing crickets. I certainly, I don't. Right. Uh, what is the firing order of your car? What cylinders fire first? No clue. No clue, right? Do you need that? Do you need to know that? No. No, to drive your car. So here you are a user, but everything is hidden from you. We call that encapsulation, okay? And we'll even hide it from the programmer. In other words, I, I don't know how to scan. I'm not gonna code this scanner here. So it's hidden from me. All I know is I turn the key and the car starts. Here, all I know is if I type this, I create a scanner. And if I type, if I use one of its methods, okay, like this user in next double method, I know I get numbers from the keyboard. But I have no idea in my head even how that scanner works and what the mechanics of it are in the background. And later on, you're going to create things like that. Okay, you're going to create, okay, what is a person? You get to create what a person is. You're going to create uh, what traits and attributes does a cocktail have, okay, et cetera, et cetera. You get to create uh, whatever you think, a chair. What makes a chair a chair? I mean, this is a real question. What makes a chair a chair? And I'll argue with you later on, I'll tell you about Plato's allegory of the cave, where I'll say, what makes a chair a chair is chairness. It has chairness. I made that word up, by the way. So it gets more abstract. The farther you go into programming, the more abstract it gets and the more powerful it gets, okay? But for right now, it's simple and we're good. <laughs> All right, don't get, it's, it's again, right now it's not rocket science, right? Yeah. Again, most of the mistakes you're gonna make are typos or syntax, you know, if it's a syntax error, it's easy. You know, if I go like this and go like that, I get the cute little red line because it has no idea what that is. Oh, I typed that wrong. Boom, put an L in there and it's fine. Okay. The ones it cannot do, okay, or what it can't figure out is let's say that for some reason, I forget uh, to put height in there and I type radius in there. Okay. Well, now when I run this, I'm not going to get the right volume for the cylinder, right? Right, everybody agree? Right. Correct. That's a logic error on my part. And those are the hard ones to find. Because if you don't know the volume is the area times the height, there's not much I can help you, you know what I'm saying? If you don't know, uh, again, if, uh, come on, I'll just do it this way. Um, Say you come to something and you don't know 
you know, you just don't know how to calculate. Uh, I don't know the some angle or something. What do you do? Well, you go over here to Google and you type it in and guess what? You know, in other words, when you do your, uh, when you do your Celsius to uh, Fahrenheit program, I'd bring this up and make sure that if I type in, uh, let's see here. Oh, I don't know, uh, 98, let's try 60 degrees, 60 degrees. So, okay, so I know it's less than that. So how about 40 degrees? Still lower than that, 34. Okay, so it's gonna be 35 maybe. 98.6, let's try 36. There you go, 36, 98, 96.8. So your temperature's a little low that day. But if I don't get 96.8 for 36 Celsius, I know something's wrong, okay? And look at right underneath here, okay? or even down here. So it's, it's here, all you have to do is Google it, right? Just Google it. If you don't know the formula. All right, again, so now I would, I mean, just to finish this out, I would close this. Then I come wherever I saved it to and you can see it right here, there it is. I right click it, go down to send to, compress zip, boom, there it is, the one with the zipper. I go back over here to my uh, portfolio. And oh, I'll pick somebody here. And I go into my portfolio. You can see she's got her three programs there. I hit add file. I type in cylinder or whatever. Browse my computer for it. It's in my desktop. I find the one that has the, uh, where'd I put it? I've got so many of them in here. Cylinder volume, hit open. There it is, click submit, boom, there it is, cylinder. And that's all I need, okay? And I move on to the next one. If I don't like it, I wanna change it, I can right or click on it, hit delete, boom, it's gone. All right, stop sharing. I'm gonna stop recording now.